I'm holding this gigantic, double-terminated tangerine quartz from China. Why? Because it's really cool. Actually, I'm joking there, but what most people want from the crystals that they have, in addition to being beautiful and nice to have around, is to have some sort of effect, some sort of consequence or result in their life. I'm Kyle Russell. I have a blog services site, crystalconcentrics.com, and I also have powerstonecrystals.com because I also buy and sell crystals as I'm in the quest of ever procuring greater specimens to do energy work. So even though I'm metaphysically inclined, I'm also very much uh, into the geology and the uniqueness and knowing the variety and uh, special uh, rareness of many of the stones that I work with. Um, the reason I put this video together is that some people complain or are disappointed that the changes that they had hoped for as a result of working with crystals are not happening. It's just not coming together. And I wanted to give you the five reasons why that might be. The first one is that you don't yet have the education. Um, you don't yet know enough about stones and through trial and error, working with yourself or with other people, you just haven't arrived at the sort of chemistry, the thing that, that that's just what the doctor ordered for any specific item that you're trying to work on. You're very reliant on the books. And that's reason number two why I think people don't benefit as much as they could from their work with crystals. And that is that they're relying on someone else's ideas about what is what and why this works. And many of those theories, a lot of what is written out there in the literature, is to my mind quite arbitrary. I've come up with what I call language of crystals, which once you learn it, will enable you to understand how to interpret what it is that you're looking at without having to go to any book to understand what the meaning or significance of a given stone is. So I think there's a lot of misinformation out there that makes it hard for you as someone who's trying to learn about crystals to build a solid foundation and uh, your, your, your desire is there, the, you're seeking the education, but the source of the information is not ideal. Now, another reason why crystals may not be working for you is that you have the wrong stone. It's just not the right stone for the job. And as you learn more, you can make that discernment and distinction of what really are the best stones for whatever it is that you're trying to do. I'm going to give you an example here. Um, black tourmaline is touted by many to be a sort of a wonderful, cure-all, fantastic stone. I like black tourmaline. It took me a while to get to understand it. Um, my definition of what black tourmaline is good for is limits and boundaries, okay? So I would want to use it for that. Um, I wouldn't use it for clearing per se, although it has some of that capacity. Um, I think the better stone for the job would be a Ventifact here, um, or even a Jet or an obsidian. Some of the black stones, just because they're black doesn't mean they do the exact same thing. So you want to make sure that whatever it is you're trying to do, that you're using the right stone for the job. And again, I have my own theories and my own philosophies and paradigms. Yours may end up being different, but it behooves you to educate yourself, to read the books if you like, but also to learn the language of crystals from someone like myself who's been working with them for 30 years and to um, 
and to be able to arrive at your own conclusions about what uh, would be the best stones to work with and what sort of effects you're trying to achieve. Now, another reason, reason number four for why you may not be having the types of results or experience of crystals that you'd really like to be having is that you're not using great specimens, okay? A lot of what's out there are small tumbled stones. This is an example. It's actually quite pretty and I don't dissuade anybody from getting small tumbled stones, but I do believe that if you're serious about working with crystals, you want to be upgrading your collection so that you have the very best aquamarine you can afford or a few different quartzes for different functions. Um, in this case, this is a Kambaba Jasper. It has black and green, and you can't really see the pattern so well in this lighting. But um, I want you to look at that and compare it to this. This is a gigantic malachite. So it should be obvious that if I'm trying to do similar types of things with these two stones, that my results or my outcome or my experience is going to be a great deal more satisfying if I use a power stone, which this one more is than this one. That doesn't mean that you can't have small stones that pack a punch. But if you have a choice and you can get a, uh, for lack of a better word, a better specimen of any given stone, the chances of you enjoying working with that stone are a great deal better. Now the fifth and last reason why your work with crystals may not be producing the outcome that you're hoping for is that you are not using all of the factors and resources available to you. Uh, I met a guy recently who had cancer and he was using a product that was made from a uh, Venus flytrap, some sort of a carnivorous plant. And he had invested all of his curative efforts in that one product. Um, he didn't want to do doctors, he didn't want to have an operation, radiation, and all of that. But in point of fact, if what it is that you're trying to achieve is as complex as healing an illness, then you really need to use every tool available to you. You cannot rely exclusively on crystals. Um, it's like saying, you know, I want to transport this heavy box from here to there, and I'm going to put all my energy into crystal transportational uh, energies to make that happen. Well, guess what? Why would you do that if you had a dolly or a car sitting right there that you could just pick the box up, put it in, drive it across to the other side? So when we work with crystals, we don't advocate the exclusion or the neglect of all the many, many other tools and modalities that are available to us. What we recommend is that you put them all into play, everything in its own role to go to town on that project. It can be big or small. It can be simple or complex. But you need to use all the tools available to you in order to affect the types of change, result, and experience that you're seeking with crystal energies. So I hope that was helpful and informative. Again, that was the five things that might be standing in the way of you getting the best results or benefits from working with crystals. Again, I'm Kyle Russell, crystalconcentrics.com, Powerstone Crystals. I welcome your questions. If this is on YouTube, please subscribe or write me, kyle at crystalconcentrics.com. Looking forward to connecting with you soon.